I'd like to now move on to the, the theme of this year's conference, Interconnecting Our Nation. And this is an important theme. I'd like you to contemplate what it means for you uh, as individual citizens, but also for you as, as agency participants in this mission. The vision here is interconnecting and creating understanding. This means interconnecting our people, our organizations, using GIS and geography to frame human activities, bring our information together, all the different ologies, and interconnect our technology, integrate and transform our future. Today, we're at a moment of history which is, as many people have said, un unprecedented. Of course, they're talking a lot about COVID, but COVID is only one of the dimensions of crisis that we're facing. Loss of nature, loss of natural resources, resource shortages, social conflicts, uh, congested cities, the emerging climate change. These are like waves of, of issues that particularly you listening are particularly involved in. Being able to address these issues, this uncertainty of our future, is going to require all of us getting together. It's going to require comprehensive approaches. So let me simply say overcoming the challenges, maybe that's a good way to frame it, requires fundamentally better understanding of our world. It requires better communication and collaboration to take our best science and technology and our best, most of all, our best problem solving capabilities, which is where you and the GIS community really is essential. We need to build a kind of geospatial literacy in our nation that guides and directs everything that's done. And this starts with my favorite science, geography, the science of our world. It's all about providing a way to organize and integrate knowledge. It's also about helping us interconnect the different disciplines. I like to think of it as like overlaying maps. That's a way to bring it together. Geography provides that integrative nature. It, GIS, the technology we work with, is a way to abstract geography, a kind of common language for organizing and applying the knowledge that we have. And it brings together virtually all types of content from every agency, from every discipline, from every background. And this is important. It's about connecting and modeling and visualizing our world like one globe. Uh, we'll hear tomorrow from a woman who has been to outer space. She has seen the whole world. This is Dr. Catherine Sullivan. She's seen it and she understands it holistically in her mind. And this in many ways is what we do with GIS, framing, providing a special lens to the world so that they can more intelligently act. Now, the way GIS does it is it organizes our geographic information into digital bits, we might say, or building blocks of shared information and understanding. The data, of course, but also data models that organize it thematically and so on. It frames it with analytic models to be able to predict and model what's going on. It's a language of visualization, maps and stories and, and the, the reports that are generated from it. And finally, it's a frame for organizing work, work management. These building blocks actually, ladies and gentlemen, are the key to being able to provide a framework and a process where data and measurement information is visualized, analyzed, and then used in various settings to lay out strategies and plans to make better decisions and ultimately take them to action. GIS, for me, is about creating and applying geographic knowledge holistically and widely. And this is, this, the work that you are doing is increasingly being recognized at the highest levels of government, not just in this country, but around the world. GIS professionals like yourselves are applying this science, the science of geography, in lots of little projects, in individual systems, in, I don't want to call them stovepipes, but often mission organizations organize it that way. But increasingly, this information that you're building, the knowledge that you're building, is being interconnected. It's being interconnected using web services and the ability to dynamically bring information together to represent this holistic view of the world. It's building, 
we might say, geospatial infrastructure. What is this geospatial infrastructure? Well, it's been described in different ways over the years, but it's now becoming very real. It's an architecture, actually. It's the modern GIS implementation pattern, where distributed information can be dynamically brought together and overlaid and integrated and support individuals and teams and departments and whole organizations and communities. It's leveraging the services-based nature of GIS today. And so I'm going to be hitting on this subject, geospatial infrastructure, again and again during this uh, session. But I want you to simply realize this is not a vision any longer. It's the ability to bring knowledge together and share it and engage everybody in <clears throat> being able to use it with more holistic solutions. Geospatial infrastructure is emerging very rapidly and it's interconnecting not just data, but also capabilities, analytics, real-time data, big data, uh, special AI and machine learning models so that the GIS professional opening their browser or their desktop can have access to a network of knowledge uh, that helps them do their work better, helps them see and understand. Let's start with some of these building blocks. GIS is advancing. It used to be that we'd take all kinds of data and put it into one data bank, and then that would be shared for people to use. Today, I can connect to data of almost every format and type from distributed networks of, of servers and make them not only integratable through common portals, but also supporting a whole plethora of different kinds of application. Here, multi-dimension data, CAD data, uh, BIM data, LIDAR data, tabular data, even unstructured data can be integrated, geo-referenced, and then used. And this is not just the raw data, but also we are learning how to use GIS to create these things that are now being called digital twins, a kind of snapshot of everything that we see in reality. And these digital twins are emerging rapidly in the form of landscapes. And for specialized technologies like BIM models, we can now bring them into the GIS frame. We can model digital twins of networks and whole cities and, and see them, integrate them, and begin to analyze them uh, and all of their characteristics together. GIS is taking off in ways that we had never really imagined before the web. Maps and dashboards are becoming pervasive. Take, for example, the dashboard of the coronavirus from Johns Hopkins. Actually, nearly two trillion map views have been made from this one site. And it's one example, but there are many others. Dashboards, story maps, web maps are opening the eyes so that we can see, tell stories as authors, but also help the world understand what the implications are of different human actions. Apps are similarly taking off and providing powerful capabilities. They're becoming pervasive in some ways. Web apps and also just massive mobile deployments, putting GIS inside, not only for collecting data, but also seeing views into this emerging geospatial infrastructure. And this is just the beginning, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to open access to your work everywhere for everyone. Advanced work happening in visualization and modeling and advanced analytics are also exciting to me. We figured out how to do, to do volumetric GIS using voxel technology, real-time GIS, tracking everything that moves and changes, looking at, at the oceans, looking at the atmosphere, looking at living dynamic cities. We're able to capture information now, almost like transactions from drones and bring them into GIS and do extensive modeling in almost every domain. Part of the secret here has been able to access and integrate dynamically the whole world of open science right into the GIS frame and make it part of the solutions that many of you are building. I'm particularly fond of this advancing activity, which is we're seeing that dynamic and 3D GISs are coming alive. They're taking transactional data, like 3D feature data that's updated based on, for example, new construction and so on, and integrate it with 3D meshes, reality capture, captured from drones and aircraft, bringing them all together. 
These transaction systems, the feature databases, uh, I mean, all of you know what a system of record is. They're really 3D systems of record. So as new buildings are created, boom, I can update the database and everybody else sees uh, views are up to date. This is very powerful for not only seeing in real time a digital twin, but also being able to plan and lay out scenarios for alternative futures for cities. And underlying this is new technology that allows us to do reality capture and bring in these 3D meshes and mix them up with vector information. This image of downtown uh, Frankfurt shows these beautiful 3D pictures, 3D meshes, but they're mixed with vector information or thematic information. So we can see the whole, we can interact with the whole as if it's one model, but it's leveraging the vector data and all of the attributes about it or the thematic data with our 3D uh, twin that was just created hours, for example, ago using drones or aircraft. All of this is becoming automated and the GIS data model of reality is becoming richer and uh, more productive. This is going to become pervasive also as a kind of way to do GIS. It's not just rasters and vectors, it's the whole. Specialized geospatial workflows are beginning to emerge and specialized products that support them. For example, in urban planning with a technology known as urban and in emergency management with a technology known as, as mission and on and on. Other ones like indoor mapping and indoor navigation and analytics. I'll be talking about some of these uh, more in just a few minutes. We're also seeing GIS become embedded in other major IT systems, systems like SAP or Salesforce or, or Microsoft systems or IBM systems. Or, wow, this means that your work, the work of building geospatial infrastructure can be embedded and integrated into other sorts, completely other sorts of, of technologies and other kinds of transactions. And it's gonna create a kind of revolution of of insights and understanding. It's not just little maps inside your apps. No, it goes much further than that. And our collaboration with different major software vendors is helping us building direct integrated tools. Organizations are also increasingly collaborating and we see this all over the world. In my neck of the woods, as they say out in California, one of the big utility companies Pacific Gas and Electric, or PG&E, is now sharing their information with a state emergency management organization as services, so it can be integrated and overlaid, things like outages or facilities, and vice versa. We're seeing new collaboration in state and local agencies. And a wonderful example is our own Census Bureau, where they've used services to work with state and local governments, sharing information, or sometimes referred to as sharing common services. This is a kind of revolution that's occurring. And similarly, we're seeing with the web, these new GIS hubs pattern, the next step beyond simple portals, transforming the way that we engage citizens and also the way we engage agency to agencies. This is interesting because it makes maps and apps a kind of language for interacting, for uh, getting information from citizens and telling stories about the situation, doing collaborative planning, providing whole new ways to participate around common interests. Look, geospatial infrastructure, this pattern I've been describing, is literally transforming organizations. <laughs> I have a great privilege of watching sort of from the front row, much of the work that you are doing. You are transforming your organizations, leveraging and integrating lots of new tools, cloud computing, AI and machine learning, uh, the use of apps to make it uh, spread all over, the ability to integrate smart mapping and smart visualization. All of this is coming together, ladies and gentlemen, as we, as a collaborative community, continue evolving our work. This is becoming powerful. I mean, individual projects were interesting. When you began to build systems, that was even more interesting. Whole departments like Department of Interior or, or, or many others, Department of Agriculture, brought together subsystems that are beginning to build systems of system. 
form coalition. That's been a gradual evolution. And along the way, it's helped you organize your work, improve communication, helped understand complexity, and also came up with a foundation for holistic solutions. And this is what is really needed to address these big issues that we're facing uh, at this, particularly at this time. Infrastructure, this idea of building collaborative infrastructure across the entire government is important. But realizing this kind of an interconnected nation, the thing I've been abstractly talking about, and addressing these big challenges is going to take more than just technology. I mean, uh, I feel so intimidated by the challenge of it. Mere technology providers are not going to do it. And even the science behind our technology is not enough. It's going to take people like yourself who understand the problems, problems of, of systemic racism, problems of climate change, problems of water contamination, and so on. Understanding it first, understanding precedes action. And then collaborating and envisioning solutions to these. This is, this is you say, well, oh, I'm not in that business. I'm not in the solution. Yes, we are all in that business. It also requires a, a organizing work, doing the real work. It isn't just waving your hands. No, it's like doing the, the, the time and the money and the allocate and organizing it. It finally requires much of what many of you do in public service, which is a sense of purpose. And so let me simply say the work of GIS professionals, your work is critical and your leadership is essential to be able to realize this kind of a vision.